Regulars to this channel will know that I'm a great advocate in the belief that it's the photographer that makes a photograph, not the camera that takes it. But a little like this array of hammers here, our camera is a tool that we simply cannot do without. Many people will lead you to believe that buying the best camera gear your budget will allow will make you the best possible photographer that you can be, but I don't think that's the case. No, camera gear matters, but maybe not in the way that we think it does. Let me explain. This is a claw hammer. It's absolutely brilliant at hammering nails into the wall to put your wonderful photographs up. And look, it's even got this fantastic contraption on the other side that gives it its name that helps you to get the nails back out again when you inevitably put them up in the wrong place. This heavy little beast here is what's known as a lump or club hammer. And this is great for smashing things up, rocks, old sheds, or potentially a camera if it doesn't do what you want it to do. Hmm, maybe not that last one. However, if you tried to put pictures up with this, you'd not only end up with a hole in the wall, you'd probably end up with a few broken fingers as well. This hammer, although it looks menacing, is actually quite light, so best of luck tearing down a shed or putting pictures up with this one. Now, this is a rubber hammer, and it's best suited to hammering in tent pegs or getting flags level when you're laying a patio. If you're new to this channel, then you're probably wondering why I'm explaining how hammers work when isn't it meant to be all about photography? If you are a regular, then you know what I'm like by now. The truth is, these hammers have a lot more in common with our cameras than you may think. These are three cameras from my digital camera collection. And this one is my Nikon Z6. This is my workhorse camera. Out of all of these cameras, it produces the sharpest, largest image and does the most amount of things. This is my Nikon ZFC. As well as being the most attractive camera, I think, in my collection, it's also small and compact. It fits into my coat pocket. It might not pack as much of a punch as the Z6, but it still does a great job. This is my Bushnell trail camera. With a six megapixel sensor and coming in at just a hundred pounds, it's the least performing and cheapest camera in my collection. But it does take infrared photographs and it does have a movement triggered shutter, if that's the sort of thing that you're into. Where am I going with this, I hear you all ask. Well, let me explain. Have a guess which one of these cameras helped me to pass my master's degree in photographic studies at the University of Westminster with merit. Yes, you're right. It was the Bushnell trail camera. No, I'm not joking. This £100 trail camera took some of the most important photographs that I've ever taken. It might not be the best camera from a technical point of view, but because I wanted large format, super noisy black and white infrared photos, it was the best one for the job. If I turned up to one of my property shoots with this camera, I'd probably be met with a question like, aren't you meant to be a professional photographer? Because of course, we all know what professional photographers look like. They all come with big fancy cameras. So no, of course, if I was doing a professional shoot of any kind, I'd probably take the Z6. I'm not going to take my trail camera with me when I go on holiday in a few weeks either, because I'd love to come home with some good quality photos that I can look back on in years to come as memories of my trip away. But neither am I going to take the Z6. I mean, look at it. It's far too cumbersome to be carrying around with me when I'm trying to have a relaxing time. No, my holiday camera of choice is the ZFC. It's compact, lightweight, and still takes some great photos. Due to the copious amounts of advertising out there, people are falsely led to believing that there's one camera on the market that will do absolutely everything they want it to do. But I'm afraid that's just not the case. Trying to take a photograph of a wildebeest 500 metres away with a smartphone is a little bit like trying to hammer a nail in with a club hammer. 
Just like taking a snapshot from your hotel balcony with a £5,000 camera and lens combo is a bit overkill. But what if your budget won't stretch to a menagerie of cameras to cover every single photographic possibility? Let's face it, hammers are much cheaper than cameras, or at least they are until AI takes over the world. My advice would be to work out what it is that your future camera system must have that's absolutely vital to you. If you want something light and compact, then go for something like the ZFC or a Micro Four Thirds system like Olympus. That is, considering you've already got the degree in the overcomplicated Olympus menu system. If you're only ever going to photograph wildlife from a hide, then you're not going to be bothered too much about weight, but you are going to need some hot autofocus and a decent array of telephoto lenses to match. If I was in that position, I'd probably go for Sony, but be prepared to take some moving pictures as well, because of course we all know that Sony cameras are vlogging cameras. If perfectly rendered colours is what you're looking for, then go for Fuji, but make sure that you've got small fingers for the overcomplicated buttons and dials. Oh, and make sure that you've updated your post-production software, because Fuji's annoying RAW format isn't read by anything released earlier than last week. Or if you're boring like me, you could always go for Nikon or Canon. Hmm, I may have just done myself out of the chance of any future sponsorship deals there. In all seriousness, all cameras do certain things really well and are terrible at other things. It's the nature of photography. Us photographers are so demanding because we're so diverse in what we photograph and how we photograph it. There's no such thing as an easy to use, lightweight, fast, slow, wide angle telephoto infrared super camera on the market, just like there isn't a hammer that does all jobs well. I've amassed this camera collection, as well as many others that are out of shot, over a number of years, and I do use each and every one of them as and when the need arises. The only time that I upgrade or change my camera equipment is when I see a shortfall in those needs and the equipment that I already have. It's not the fact that there's a new lens out that I want to try, or a camera that does bigger and better things, because ultimately I'm quite happy with the stuff that I've got for the moment. Many of my fellow YouTubers will lead you to believe that buying better camera gear, lenses and post-production software will lead you to be the best photographer that you possibly can be, but I don't believe that's the case. Yes, better cameras can often lead to sharper, more detailed images, but they'll never be able to dictate the light that you shoot under, the composition that you use, or maybe most importantly, the subject matter that you choose to photograph. Only you can do that. Just like a hammer, our camera or cameras are tools to help us to get the results that we want. No matter how good your camera system is, you'll always find flaws in its specification. Good photographers don't see these flaws as barriers. They compromise or go get a better tool to do the job. Just like a landscaper wouldn't try to lay a patio with a claw hammer, they'd go and get a rubber mallet. Gear matters, but it only matters when it does what we want it to do. Now, if you'd like a task to help you get around those annoying flaws, then watch this video next. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more tenuous links between photography and the real world.